What's up hobby friends? My name is Casey and welcome back to another miniature rescue. Today, all I really want to do is paint a space marine. Sometimes in this hobby, we really get going on projects. Gotta finish that army or need to print out these models or my warband needs that extra conversion before I can play. Whatever it is, it can sometimes affect us in a kind of negative way. Having a ton of projects can be a fun thing, but don't let that huge end goal get in the way of the simple things that this hobby can offer, like painting a one-off mini. What I want you to take away from this video is that it's okay to put down the big stuff for something that has nothing to do with your current goals. We got into this hobby because miniature painting is fun. So take a break and just have fun for a little bit. You'll probably feel better for it and I bet you'll make even more progress on your larger projects because you'll feel even more motivated and refreshed for having done so. Too often, I let larger projects stand in the way and not today, my friends. Today, we are going to paint a space marine and for no other reason than because I want to. So the other day I was browsing eBay and while I was looking for some upcoming projects for the channel, I happened to stumble upon an interesting Space Marine auction. Now I'm not exactly much for Space Marines in most iterations. In fact, I've been collecting a pile of Space Marines for some time, but only as a weird byproduct of getting them over time in random kits. Tons of Games Workshop starter sets or standalone games come with a variety of Space Marines. So as a result, a lot of us tend to have extras lying around. While we will be dealing with this pile of Space Marines at some point, I wanna bring your attention back to that interesting auction I came across. Robot Gilliman, Big Rob, Robot Gilliman. The big blue and gold Ultramarine Primark himself was going for a price tag of 30 bucks, which when compared to the MSRP from Games Workshop is a pretty good deal. Of course, there are reasons for that price tag, which I wasn't actually fully aware of when I bought the model. Kind of a little trigger happy on the buy it now. Yeah. Let's take a little bit of a closer look at the model and do some comparisons. At first glance, the overall model isn't half bad. The paint job is perfectly acceptable. Of course, I'll be stripping it and cleaning everything up. But at first glance, that is the least of our problems. Here's the main issue. The backpack is partially missing. The main bits are there, but the top part with the fancy halo and wings is completely gone. It's just not there. The funny thing is, the model still looks pretty good without it. So much that I didn't even realize I bought it with that problem. But of course, we need to try and fix that and get it looking good again. I'm gonna lean into try for that. The other thing is that the auction didn't come with any other parts in the kit, so no head replacement. Personally, I don't mind the Space Marine helmet, but I definitely prefer the actual face for this character model. Not really a big deal, but something to think about if we happen to come across a good head replacement. Still leaning into try and if. Yes. We need to make some decisions and start getting to work. First, can we find replacement parts either with bits lying around or 3D printable? I checked out a few Space Marine kits that I have laying around, and after going through them, I really couldn't find anything that would really fit as a replacement. Everything was either too small or just not grand enough to put on top of this model. So to the internet, I will go and uh, check. Honestly, I spent way too much time looking for parts to print out. There are quite a few proxy models for this guy, but none of them really that detailed or come with an epic backpack. I did come across a rather nice jetpack with wings that almost worked. I printed out a few of those and tried to figure out a good way to use it. But in the end, I was very reluctant about cutting into this model in order to make something like that work. Not that we couldn't have, but most of it's already intact. I don't really want to ruin it. And I'll put a save search up on eBay for Guillemon bits, hoping to score that backpack topper at some point. But for now, he's perfectly good to play with on the table. Plus, whether I'm at a convention that has bit sellers or eBay, or just looking through 3D printed parts online, having that one part to hunt for is a very exhilarating experience and something to always look forward to. You never know when you're gonna strike gold and be able to finish off that project. The next step is to strip this model and clean him up before we get to the repaint. So let's get Rabute in a bath and figure out how we're gonna paint him. While he's soaking, let's take a look at Instagram and see what the community has been doing with this model. All right, so we're on Instagram. We're just gonna start scrolling through and look for stuff that might stand out that you know, might inspire us to paint something pretty awesome. One of the first things that I actually noticed pretty much right out of the gate is that almost all of these models are painted in the same way, which is fine. I mean, it, it kind of makes sense being 
a very specific model, right? It's a, it's a character. He's got a specific color. If you were to paint this red, I don't think that would really work. So it makes sense. That being said, I do want to look for maybe some things that just stand out that we can uh, latch on to. Now, this is a really cool idea. I like this. It's a silver sword instead of that gradient with just flames coming off of it. That's really cool. What else we got around here? Now, obviously, I would be remiss if I didn't even mention this. This is epic. So good. I love it. I don't have time to do that, and uh, I don't. I don't even know if I'm technically capable. So, yeah, maybe, maybe someday, maybe we'll get there. It'll be good. But that's that's so cool. I like how bright this blue is. That's pretty nice. Like that sky blue look. And I think that's probably what we're going to look for in doing this one today. I also enjoy this type of gradient on the sword where it goes from pretty dark to, you know, that kind of yellow and white at the tip. Because obviously this is edge highlighted, but, you know, that really works for me. I like that idea. And the flames being yellow in the middle and then they kind of fade to black or just a darker red is really cool as well. Because obviously the flames aren't as hot on the edges like that, just right in the middle. So... You know, it gives a good combination. That's something to think about when we get to our sword. The other thing I really like about this is how grounded this model feels on this base. Basically, using this pigment powder and then tying it into the paint job really just solidifies the model to the ground and makes it feel more realistic. It just works. And I'm personally a pretty big fan of that. So I know we're going to be doing something like that. This is a great model. I really like this. And the eyes don't look derpy. So that's a huge bonus. It, is that is that heresy oh yes yes it is still looks great i think one of the main takeaways here is that pretty much all of these look really fantastic like there isn't one that i've seen that was just like oh you know it's fine they're, they're just all really good i mean across the board I and mean, maybe that's a testament to the model but you know People are just really good at painting. <laughs> like, look at that. Look at that. That's rad. Also with that silver sword with the flames in the middle. That's really cool. So I think there's a lot of really cool ideas here. There's a lot of similarities between most of these models, uh, which I, I do like. I think that's fine. Like I said, it's, it's a Primark model. It's kind of specific. So we're going to try and replicate that. I think we're still going to do the gradient on the sword because I, I do end up liking that a little bit better overall. And then we're going to do some fun stuff with the base. You know, I was talking pigment powders and that kind of thing. So that's that seems like a pretty good direction to go. And uh, hopefully I can keep it clean enough to do it justice. So we'll see. Now that we have some ideas of a direction, let's finish up the cleaning process and start to get the real work done. Taking him out of the Sonic Cleaner, which was filled with LA's Totally Awesome, he's actually looking really good. I have a feeling that this model may have been painted without any primer. Paint doesn't usually come off this much just after a 20 minute cycle. There's still a little bit of grass left on the base that I can pretty much just scrape off with a hobby knife. Otherwise, the rest of it just fell right off and is now green goo. Before laying down primer, I wanna go over the model really quick and scrape off any of the mold lines that really stand out. In this case, the only ones I can really see that are left on this model are actually on the top of his feet, so off they go. I want to fill any gaps in the base and blend the basing features together. I like to use texture paint, something that's a little more grounded. The last thing I did was move his head just a little bit. I was able to pop the head off and just change the direction he was looking, to be a little more towards the claw hand. Completely personal preference at this point, but I do like the way that looks a little bit better. All right, now we have the model properly set up and ready to go. It is time to begin the painting process. First color we will be using is a dark blue from Pro Acryl. I actually decided to do all of the blues with Pro Acryl because the base set of paints that they make come with three blues that work ridiculously well for ultramarines. So the dark blue goes over the black almost completely. 
I lay that blue down pretty lightly in the shadows and a little heavier over the top. That way we can keep the shadows dark and still have a nice blue color. Next up is regular old blue, kind of a mid-tone blue. This will be sprayed like a zenithal highlight over the entire model so that the shadows are still blue and anything we miss is still black. And the rest of the armor is the standard ultramarine blue color. Finally, I'll take a nice sky blue color and throw down highlights on top of each volume. The shoulder pad, the chest plate, tops of the knees, and the feet. Each of these armor panels gets a nice highlight so that when we come back in with all that trim, it's going to give us a really cool fade for each piece. Once the basic color workup is complete, then it's time to start filling in those details. I start with a bright aluminum color for the gun and the tubes. I want to start bright with this because we're going to be relying heavily on some washes later on. So I want these metallic parts to be shiny and crispy with the bright metal color. It looks really good against that bright blue too. Of course, the next step with metallics will be to tackle the absolute insane amount of trim on this model. Now there are a few tricks to help you get through this section, but it really comes down to being patient and taking time with each piece. To make it a little easier to fill in the trim like this, try and use the side of your brush to just graze the raised details, almost like a dry brush, but as intentional as you can be just to hit that trim. And then you can come back in and refine that with a nice sharp brush. Make sure you don't have too much paint on the brush because the last thing you want is that paint getting away from you and hitting the blue of the armor. Again though, patience is the key. Take your time and go as slow as you need to get it done properly. Even then I still screw it up. Now for that part in the video where we skip ahead really fast so you don't actually see how long that that took. It, it took a minute. It was a long time. But I got it. Now that the trim is done, super easy by the way, I'll come in with some red and white to take care of the purity seals. For the white, I start with an ivory color, that way we can highlight up with lighter white ivory or whatever later. I also take that ivory and go over all of the parts of the trim that I don't want to be gold. There's some ultramarine symbols and skulls that are perfect to break up the gold and bring in more color to the armor. Not to mention that the white over blue armor is a very ultramarine thing to do. Using ivory, I take my time to go over each piece and try not to go over paint that is still fresh. With whites in particular, you wanna do one pass at a time. It doesn't matter that you missed a spot or that not everything is filled in or perfectly opaque. You need to wait for that section to fully dry and then come back in for another layer. If you don't wait and you come blazing back in, more white, you're just gonna tear up that paint and it's gonna to start to look chalky and thick and you won't be able to fix it. If you can be patient when it comes to that gold trim, then you have what it takes to be patient with the white. So now we've come to the point where all of the base coats for Gilmon are done and we need to bring in more definition and separation for each color and piece. So what makes the most sense for something like that is an oil wash. In order to make sure that I can get the best results possible, I will gloss varnish the entire model before that wash goes down. This will lower the surface tension and allow the oil wash to get deep into the cracks and crevices and stay away from the flat surfaces. With that gloss layer of protection, we can also come back in with some sponges to clean up any wash that does affect those flat surfaces. So either way, we're setting ourselves up for the most success we can have. The wash goes down rather nicely and you can really see this model starting to come to life. This is one of my favorite parts of the process, hands down. I let the model sit for about an hour before coming back to begin that cleanup process. Using dollar store sponge makeup brushes, I start to remove the oils from any area where it just doesn't belong. One of the benefits of using a large flat sponge is that you can take away the oils from all of the flat surfaces and it just skips over those recesses. And if you don't want the oils in those recesses, then you can just angle your brush and get in there and take it away. And of course, if I end up taking too much away, I can always come back in and apply wash again. It's kind of amazing. There's just so much control over this process and it really helps to make the model look even better. After the model has been cleaned and the oils are completely dry, I hit the entire model with a coat of matte varnish. Because this is a space frame, there will be a good amount of edge highlighting that will need to be done. So I'm gonna start with light blue and begin to hit all of the edges of the armor. From here, it's really about going over each piece and bringing back the saturation of those original colors. Not that the oil wash really took a lot away, but we're just giving it a little bit more. This even goes for the gold trim. Yeah, we're not quite done with that yet. 
I like to mix my original gold with a bright silver and edge highlight all of that gold. Not only will we get even more separation from the black lining, but we're gonna get that gold to be shiny again after that matte varnish. The good news is it doesn't have to cover every bit of the trim, just anything that runs through the highlight points in the tops of prominent pieces. At first, it may not be super noticeable, but once you go over all of the trim, you can really see that the shine is back and that gold is looking pretty nice. Finally, we can get to the sword. I decided on something pretty straightforward that is hopefully pretty easy to replicate. From the beginning, I had put some white ink on the sword, most white at the top fading to kind of near black at the hilt. So that's where we're gonna start. The follow-up color will be a deep red, something that the white ink will take and make look very bright, but the black undercoat or the darker paint below that will just be tinted slightly, which gives us a super nice gradient. You really only wanna go halfway up the sword with this color because you'll be adding yellow right over the top of that. Now, because we faded the red out halfway up, any yellow going over the top is faded in the same area should give us a nice orange transition. Yellow and red make orange. Right there, we have a three color flaming sword. Four colors if you don't put yellow all the way up to the tip. Now this is a perfectly acceptable sword right here and something that you can definitely do even if you're new to airbrushing. To push it a little bit more, I'm gonna wait for it to dry and then add some yellow contrast paint to the mix. Brushing this color over the entire sword will saturate those colors even more while simultaneously bringing them together and leaving orange in the recesses of those flames, the actual 3D sculpted flames on the sword. This makes the flames look even better because now it has even more dimension to it. I'm gonna follow this up by airbrushing the tips of the flames a darker red, kind of like heat dissipating, not cut that. I think this looks pretty nice, but it's not really needed necessarily. Still, you can go pretty hard in the flames and they look pretty good because of that initial gradient. Lastly, I'm gonna edge highlight the sides and tip of the swords as well as lightly going down the middle to show the heat of the center of the sword. And with that, this model is almost complete. Before we call the model done, we need to finish off the base. I painted in the Chaos Warrior a nice red color, because I'm kind of corn warriors. Repainted the rubble a nice grayish brown and finished off the whole thing with a good helping of reddish orange pigment powder. Now this works extremely well with the blue armor and makes the model pop even more. Really stands off of that orange. So this week, I really wanted to do something different and this Marine presented a great opportunity to do just that. It's really not even something that I intend on using, but now I have a really cool mini that could lead me down another hobby rabbit hole in the future, or make a great gift for someone who plays Ultramarines. Either way, it offered something different and has made me even more excited to tackle other projects. I kind of got that fix, and now I'm ready to move on. If you are feeling overwhelmed by large army project, you just need a bit of a change of pace, then I highly recommend picking up a mini that just looks like it would be really fun to paint. Don't overthink it, just pick it up and have fun. Your army will be there when you're done and I promise it won't be mad at you. Thank you for joining me on another Miniature Rescue. If you like something about this video, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing as it really helps out the channel. Once again, I'm Casey and I will see you in the next video. Oh yeah, and with that, here is Hrabuta Guillemot or something like that.